And what we have here is we have the bolt kit. These bolts are used to fasten the actual tank to the bowl. And what we have to do first is we have to put the rubber washer with the bolt inside the tank. And then we put a, a, wash, or a, a washer and a nut and we tighten that rubber washer inside to where it's squashed, to where it not, will not leak. We don't want it totally squashed. We just want it about somewhat or halfway squashed so it'll seal the top of the bolt inside the tank. We've got about three uh, rubber washers here, uh, two of them which we don't need. So I'm going to remove them real quick here. And this is how you buy these kits. You can buy them at Home Depot, Lowe's, or your local plumbing shop, or even uh, True Value Hardware or Ace Hardware. So what we have here is we have the bolt and we have the uh, rubber washer uh, in my hand right now. And I'm going to get this thing ready to install. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the rubber washers and the bolt, make sure it's fully clasped all the way to the top of the bolt and the bolt head, and I'm going to put that inside the tank and I'm going to wrench it down to where it's uh, completely squashed. Okay. And you typically need, sometimes you need three. There's three. There may be three fasten points on the tank, but at this point we only have two. Okay, so we need two sets of washers and two sets of nuts. And we only have two bolts here, so I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. This is an old one uh, where the washer has been squashed and probably uh, it's cracked a little bit, so I took them out and I'm going to completely replace them. Because what happens is that the top of that bolt squashes down into the washer and seals that. And we have to have that so we can fasten the tank to the bolt. Okay, in order to do this process, I need uh, two things. I've got a socket wrench with a socket head, and I need a long stem flathead screwdriver. That's so I can reach into the tank. It's got to be a flathead because typically the top of those bolts are slotted. So I would need, therefore, either what we call a flathead screwdriver or a slotted screwdriver. Uh, in this case, the nuts uh, are half inch, so I'm going to grab a half inch drive so that I can fully seat the uh, washer and squash it when I make my uh, wrenching. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to insert the bolt into the tank with the rubber washer on it. And again, the rubber washer goes inside the tank. And sometimes this is a difficult process. You've got to reach in there and get the bolt through the hole, through the tank uh, connection there. Pull it through, hold it in place. Now I'm going to take my washer, put it on, and I'm going to take the nut. And I'm going to start to hand tighten this thing until I get it snug. And what we're doing here, the purpose of this is to squash the washer inside the tank so that when I place my tank onto my bowl, I'm not trying to squash the washer by connecting the tank to the bowl. Then I'm going to grab a flathead screwdriver, hold the top of the bolt in place so that when I wrench on the nut, it doesn't turn simultaneously. I need to hold one in place while I tighten the other. And it just so happens, I believe, that that socket, that long, long stem socket head is not long enough to reach over the bolt. So I'm going to have to revert to uh, using a crescent wrench. So what I'm going to do is grab the crescent wrench, and that happens sometimes. And I'm going to make sure, again, I get a, a good wrench seat. The seat of my wrench is crest up against the bolt and the nut, and that it is secure on both sides of the nut so that I can tighten it. And I want, again, I want slow and controlled turns. I don't want to just get on there and start haphazardly turning this nut, because we are working with porcelain. If I over tighten this, I could easily crack the tank. Slow controlled turns and keeping a good feel for the inside and how much I'm squashing that rubber washer that's sitting on top of the bolt inside the tank. This is very important. This is where a lot of leaks occur because this method is not used 
where we fully seat the rubber washer inside the tank before installing the tank to the bowl. You can see inside here we've got the top of the bowl which is slotted and as I look inside the tank here my rubber washer should be squashed and what I mean by squashed is sealed because that's going to seal up uh, when I make my connection. When I fill this tank with water you can see how it's seated now and squashed. The top of that bolt is fully squashed into the rubber gasket or the rubber washer therefore no water will leak through that joint. Now we'll move on from a top view here. Again we can see the rubber washer. We can see the top of the bolt. It's flat and that washer we want to squash. We want it squashed inside the tank so that will not leak. So I'll take my flathead screwdriver or slotted screwdriver, hold the top of that in place, then I'm going to grab a washer and nut and I'm going to tighten that together so that that rubber washer is squashed inside the tank. I got to make sure that I'm doing a tie, I did a bottom view and a top view, so now you can see the top view. I'm going to hold that bolt in place with my slotted screwdriver. One method is I can tighten this, the bolt into the nut or I can revert to using my crescent wrench and tightening the nut onto the bolt so that that rubber washer is squashed. I want to make sure I have a good seal. I've got to look at this and see that I have a good seal so that water does not leak. If that washer is uh, somewhat up a little bit, there's a good chance it could leak. Going down to the bottom view here, I see I have my fill valve fully uh, installed. I've got my uh, attachment bolts that go from tank to bowl. I've got my uh, squash washer that will uh, seal off the connection from tank to bowl. So as we look at this, um, and, and this is just a simple connection, all I'm going to do is just make sure that, that it's secure. The handle secure, again, as the handle lifts up or pushes down, the flapper is pulled up. And this is just a top view right here. As I flip my handle down, the flapper goes up and the water goes from tank to bowl and the uh, toilet is flushed. I want to make sure I have enough lift of my flapper and it's going to stay in place for enough water to flush. So we have everything fully assembled and we have our fill valve connected to our flush valve. The water is going to come up the fill valve, uh, disperse into the flush valve and fill up the tank. Don't forget about your adjustments with your adjustment screw. Um, and then you have your flapper valve. And sometimes, you know, it, to go a little bit further than that, if you have problems with your flapper, it may just need to be cleaned. Just check your flapper and make sure that it is clean or it may have to be replaced. Make sure you grab the same type. Now we can see inside here, there has a water line and that's the fill line of the water. When, I, when the water is being dispersed or supplied to the tank, it's going to fill up to that water line. And I can see that this is a 1.28 GPF. That is 1.28 gallons per flush right there, and then, or 4.8 liters per flush. So in America, we use gallons, and that's 1.28 gallons per flush. 